what a cluster of a film you are. My full disclosure, I haven't seen the original movie, I haven't read the book, I am just here to represent the disgruntled vocal, I don't know, minority, majority, whichever group is the people who haven't heard about this franchise at all before and don't really care and only watch it because uh, it's in cinema, might as well. Now, I watched two movies in cinema today. First being The Bad Guys, a fun little caper film with fantastic animation, great voice acting, and enjoyable and interesting characters. And then, you know, this pile of pish. The first movie being one where the final big plan is to mind control an army of guinea pigs into stealing money from an orphanage. And some, somehow it has the smarter, more well thought out ending. Now, The Bad Guys had quite a cast of characters, and I know that because I could uh, you know, name them when I left the movie. Couldn't really do that with this movie. There is one who's, I guess, maybe a villain. I don't know, the movie doesn't really make it overly clear later on, but I could name him, um, mainly because I jokingly said, lol, this would be a really funny, stereotypical Native American name to one of my friends, and it turned out to actually be fucking right. So yeah, for the rest of the review, I'm going to call him Rain Water. His name is actually Rain Bird. I made a massive fucking cock up, came back in and stuck us in, because I just want to be honest with you. I fucked up. The main character in this movie is... Charlie, I nearly said Carrie again when I was recording this take because I've accidentally called her Carrie repeatedly because when I first saw the trailer a month ago, I thought this was just the Carrie movie. I didn't realize Stephen King had literally just written the same story twice. She's a little girl. She's kind of getting to her period time and she has powers and she's losing control of herself. She's a terrible, terrible character. It's one of those things where as the movie goes on, she's repeatedly bullied by characters, and I think the movie wants us to feel sorry for her, but I keep going, no, I'm there with you, mate, so she, she is a, an absolute weirdo. All these scenes you're seeing of her awkwardly staring at people, that's her, that's her entire performance. She's either staring at people, mumbling, or setting people on fire. She has no in-between. Now, even for quick reviews, I like to have a bullet point list or a wee script or something like that. Just, you know, kind of keep me right as I'm chatting away to you guys. The problem is every time I look across that, all I can see is probably, I guess, or I assume. Because the movie doesn't really go into anything in particular. Like, for example, we know they're being chased by an evil government organization. Well, firstly, we don't know that they're evil because no one really does anything overly evil within the movie. Like, we only really see a couple of the government guys, and they're like, alright, you know, they're not really monsters or anything like that. We see the boss, and she's shadowy-like, but she doesn't really do anything overtly evil or anything like that. Like, when she's a baby, the little girl gets kidnapped because she has superpowers, but like they just kind of drive five minutes down the road and stop to have a coffee with their freshly kidnapped baby. So the dad instantly catches up to him and murders him, and that means that they have to go on the run. They're on, like their fourth identity and they make a point that they can't like get a phone or internet or anything like that because they're worried they're going to get tracked but they still also have a car which is registered in their name which he specifically says later on we can't drive that anymore because it's registered to us and they'll be looking for it so I, I don't get how they got managed to get that past them for the whole time but they can't get like internet or anything like that but apparently they can get cable because the girl knows in depth what like field agents are in the fbi i don't fucking know she also goes to school still, which I don't know how you could do if you're like under a fake identity, how they can get you enrolled in a school. But yeah, she still manages to go to school, even though both parents don't seem to work. So I don't know why they can't just homeschool her, because she's being repeatedly bullied, and that makes her go nuts and cause her powers to come out. Now, we actually spend very little time with the government organization, which is a negative, because you have no idea what their mission is, or their end goal, or if they're trying to weaponize these people, or if they're trying to actually help them, or anything like that. Because we never really get to see them actually interact with any of these superheroes at any point. Because the main focus of the movie is the family, and the familial bonds, and stuff like that, and it all kind of falls apart. Because the little girl's a superhero. She has the fire powers, but she has other powers too, which are quite ill-defined. Because she gets other powers from her parents, who are also both superheroes, but the problem is their powers are so ill-defined, by the end of it, I didn't know what power she got from which person, because they're all just kind of up in the air on what they actually are. Throughout this movie, I repeatedly had to ask myself if superheroes are standard in this universe, or if they're meant to be unusual. The government created a super serum, which they invited the parents in, along with a whole bunch of other test subjects, and they injected them with it. So it kind of is implied that they got their powers through this, but at the same time, during the application process for the testing, the parents both showed that they had superpowers, so I'm not sure if it's meant to be enhancing their superpowers, 
or if the government is just bringing them in to monitor them because they knew they had superpowers and were trying to trick them into coming in. It's never explained. That's why I said a lot of the earlier points were me just going, maybe, or I guess, or perhaps, because they don't really explain any of this. Like, for example, the dad mentions he has premonition and can see the future, but that never, never comes up again. So, yeah, they make a big point that the girl is the first of her kind, which I'm assuming they're talking about her being a second generation superhuman, which... Uh, I don't know if superheroes can just like emerge naturally like the dad had psychic powers already. I, I can't believe this is the first time there's ever been a child born with superpowers because obviously they were born with superpowers. The thing is, in the movie, a lot of people don't even act like superpowers are that unusual either. Like the wee girl at one point is having a conversation with a woman in a coma and like the other person in the room who's never experienced superpowers before is just totally okay with the whole thing and just buys it immediately. But then the teachers in the school freak out when she blows up a toilet, which is something that she could just do herself anyway if you really wanted to. And then it somehow goes all the way up to the governmental level where they realize, oh, this must be our super powered little girl we've been hunting for 10 years and just immediately are all over it. Which is really funny because it leads to like the parents and the little girl all screaming at each other when they realize that they have to leave again. And it just ends with the little girl setting the mom on fire in a really funny way where she just stands her straight arm on fire screaming. And then you like see that it's like melted the entire top layer of skin off her arms and she is just totally okay with that. She's like not passing out from shock. She just tells the dad and daughter go out and get ice cream. It's grand. Like I thought she was actually doing this so she could call the police. Like she finally realized this has gone too far. The girl is dangerous. I'm going to send them out of the house. I'm going to call the government organization. But, but no, no, it doesn't happen. Instead, some evil Native American guy called Rainwater just shows up and murders her. Rainwater himself has powers, but they're really ill-defined. Like He can read her mind at one point, and I think he has powers to protect himself against mind control, but I'm not really sure. He's an assassin who's reactivated by the government organization, and he goes to capture these people. But like he knows she has telekinetic powers, and he just kind of casually walks towards her, and like she throws a lamp at him but misses. Like, why didn't she just use her telekinetic powers to, like, rip his head off or pop his head like a fucking grape? But she just doesn't and then kind of dies off screen. I really like it, though, when the dad and daughter get home because the daughter immediately tells her dad that she had intended to set him on fire instead of the mom. And this is never once mentioned again. Their relationship is totally fine afterwards. They're all grand. They love each other immensely, even though it's kind of treated like an accident. But then it's only an accident because she didn't get to kill her dad. It's, it's fucking retarded. The daughter immediately gets captured by Rainwater, who, like, instead of, like, punching her in the back of the head and knocking her out and grabbing her and quickly running out of the house before the dad notices, he, like, just kind of gets her and covers her eyes and holds a knife near her throat, and she doesn't react or scream or anything like that. She just stands her totally silently until the dad comes in and notices. And then he immediately starts using his mind control abilities. So he starts, like, pissing blood from his eyes and his ears and everything like that. His brain's fucking melting, basically. But, like, I don't know who's meant to be using it on, because the daughter's eyes are, like, covered, so she can't see it, so she can't be affected. And Rainwater is not, like, reacting to it in any way. And I'm not sure if it's because he has, like, special protection, like I mentioned earlier, or if it's because only half his face is being shown, because he's hiding behind a lampshade, and it has to be both eyes. This whole time, the girl's powers are going nuts as well, and, like, the temperature's rising in the room, causing metal to melt, but neither of the guy is reacting to it. They're totally no-selling the whole thing. And then you realize this bit of metal only melts because the mom's body is in a cupboard and it falls out when the metal melts. And the girl starts screaming and releases like a massive explosion like she could see it even though her eyes are covered. But the explosion also doesn't hurt anyone or really cause any damage. It just knocks the two guys over. But then the dad immediately gets up and like picks her up and just kind of leaves the house with her. And then like Warian Water gets up like a minute later and he's totally okay as well. The next 15 minutes of the movie is the two of them on the run then from the government organization and we got a really unusual scene where she like sets a cat on fire because she's annoyed it scratches her and then her dad tells her she has to put it out of its misery so she incinerates it. We get to see the cat like half burnt to death meowing in pain and it's just it's uncomfortable. It doesn't really fit with the rest of the movie. It's kind of like the scene from the trailer with the crow that they cut out of the final movie probably because it just feels a bit mean when they're trying to make this girl sympathetic but she's killing small animals which is kind of psychotic. But yeah, eventually Rainwater catches up with them. He kills a bunch of cops that were trying to arrest the two of them. And then the evil organization shows up. The girl gets away, but Dad and Rainwater are arrested. And because the evil organization arrests Rainwater because they're unhappy with him killing people, it kind of makes them seem nice. The dad also tries to escape by using his brain control powers. 
but the government reveal that they have special contact lenses they can wear that stop mind control, which is uh, just, it's something, I guess. The daughter then has like a 30 second training montage of her trying to use her powers, and apparently that's just her, she's ready, she just goes on a suicide mission now to save her dad. The little girl just kind of teleports inside the facility, and it's not like they're implying or pretending this is one of her powers. It's just clear the director had no idea how to shoot like an eight-year-old breaking into a government facility. So she just kind of shows up inside it suddenly. She then captures an agent, and instead of like mind controlling him to make him tell her stuff and give over his equipment, or like mind reading him or something like that, she just kind of tells him, "I want your gun and your badge and all this stuff." And then when he tries to pull a gun, she just incinerates him. She's then allowed to go down into the facility where she finds her dad and the quote-unquote evil boss lady. But the boss lady is like a second scene we've seen her in and she's saying reasonable things. So it doesn't imply that she's evil. We just have to assume she is because she's part of the evil organization. But then her dad mind controls the daughter and tells her to burn the place down. So she sets the boss lady and her dad on fire through the glass. So it's implied that whatever she can see, she can set on fire. Cut to her just kind of walking out of the facility then where... Agents run up to her one or two at a time, point guns at her head and say, Hey, surrender! And then she immediately just sets them on fire or mind controls them. Like, these people just got told that she just killed her own father and the boss. And they're just running up to her with no protective gear on. They're not even wearing the contact lenses that they introduced specifically for the mind control purpose. No, they just run up to her. Like, this is like one of the biggest tropes that I fucking hate. Where they're told, bring this character in alive. So everyone's suddenly alarming. They all run up. You'll see 50 of your mates die in front of you. And you'll still run up and be like, hey, surrender. I need to bring you in alive. You, you just shoot her. You'd shoot her right in the fucking head. I'm sorry, it's so stupid. It's such a bad trope. It's such a weak trope. Just to try and excuse why this little girl isn't gunned down by 20 guys. But yeah, eventually she faces people in like full protective gear and can't beat them because she just fires a flamethrower at them and it doesn't hurt them, obviously. Like, she could just start a fire inside their suit. They just show that she could set fire from like behind walls and stuff like that. So why can't she just set one inside their suit? But yeah, the second she can't, the leader of the group immediately takes his protective mask off very dramatically to talk to her and try and be nice to her. And I, I like, are we meant to recognize his face? I don't know. Maybe it's from the last movie? Yeah, I fucking don't know. But then Rainwater appears because suddenly his cell just randomly unlocked for no reason. And he kills all five of the Special Forces team firing three shots. He then drops to his knees to like invite the little girl to kill him. And she just doesn't. Like, this is the guy who just murdered her mom and got her dad captured, which directly led to him dying. B but no, she'll kill, like, a computer nerd, which you see her killing just, like, random people with no guns in the facility. But the man who directly murdered both her parents, she's like, nah, nah, we cool. And she, like, leaves the facility and Rainwater follows and holds her hand and then carries her way into the night with the facial expression that him and this little girl are definitely going to fuck. Uh, yeah, I'm quite serious about that, and it's, it is, it's kind of fucked, honestly. There's a lot of, like, longing stares from him at this girl and him repeatedly saying to people, You'll understand when you see her. This may be covered more in the book or other movie or something like that, but in this, he's really got only three scenes with the girl. One where he's holding a knife to her throat, one where he's murdering a bunch of people in front of her to capture her dad, and in this scene, and it's like... I don't... I would only describe it as, like, vaguely romantic, and it's really fucked. And... That's the end of the movie. He just picks her up and carries her off into the sunset, and that's it. Fades the credits. My audience were fucking livid. And yes, half my review was on the last five minutes of the movie, because the base invasion was just the last five minutes. So, hi. Don't watch it. It's a shite movie. It's an hour and a half long, but I was checking my phone fucking constantly. I pretty much give you a step-by-step -step breakdown in the last 14 minutes or so. I cut a few scenes, but it's mainly them just going and talking to someone. And the person just kind of says some stuff. It's not even real exposition because they don't explain anything. They just say some things and then they're out of the movie and never mentioned again. So I uh, don't watch it. Absolute shite. Graphics are laughable usually. And the best burn effect you get is on a fucking half-dead cat, which I don't really think anyone wants to see. It's just quite uncomfortable. So I just give us one a miss. I'm going to go back to watching Marvel Phase 4 because it's been a fucking shit show, boys. So I uh, like, subscribe, all that good shit. And I will see you in the next one. Have a good one, boys. Bye-bye.